Now let me compare the spinal anesthesia versus epidural anesthesia. All right. Now let me compare the spinal versus the epidural anesthesia. Now you take this particular spinal anesthesia first. If you take this spinal anesthesia, the advantage of the spinal anesthesia over the epidural anesthesia is that spinal anesthesia is highly reliable, right? Why it is highly reliable is because it is very easy to place the needle, right? It is very easy to place the spinal needle into the subarachnoid space and even the onset of action also is very quick. So the other reason why we consider this it as a highly reliable is once we place the needle into the subarachnoid space this can be confirmed by the presence of the CSF in the needle and as well as the loss of resistance. But you don't have the similar thing in epidural anesthesia. In epidural anesthesia you don't have a confirmation that you don't have any confirmatory thing that the needle is in the epidural space. But in case of spinal anesthesia we can confirm that the needle is present in the subarachnoid space by seeing that the CSF is leaking in the needle and there is also loss of resistance okay so very important point is the spinal and spinal anesthesia is highly reliable right it is highly reliable that is one very important point and the other thing is it is easier to place right easier to place the needle and how can we confirm that the confirmation that the needle is present in the subarachnoid space is confirmed by the presence of CSF in the needle. Right? This is confirmed by the presence of needle. Right? It is confirmed by the presence of CSF in the needle. Okay? So if CSF is coming through the needle, then it tells that the needle is in the subarachnoid space. And the other advantage is it has very quick onset of action. Right, the other advantage is it has very quick onset of action and remember the disadvantage is it can be performed only for the surgeries for limited duration that is a disadvantage right so this can be performed or this can be given for those surgeries which are having limited duration Okay, so those surgeries where there is limited duration, in such case, you can give this particular spinal anesthesia. But the surgeries which are requiring for prolonged period, we cannot use this particular spinal anesthesia. And the other problem is the redosing, right? For example, the surgery has taken or the surgery is expected to take little more time. Even though we are expecting that the surgery is taking little longer, we cannot do redosing because the needle once we have put in the subarachnoid space, we will remove the needle after giving the spinal anesthesia. So redosing cannot be done. Other disadvantage is redosing cannot be done. All right, next. And the other very common problem, right? Once the spinal anesthesia is over, the very common problem is postdural puncture headache, right? Postdural okay. So postdural puncture headache is a very common problem with this spinal anesthesia. So the advantage is it is highly re reliable and it is very easy to place the needle and this can be confirmed by the presence of the CSF which is coming back through the needle and as well as loss of resistance and the onset of action is very quick onset of action. But the problems are it, the spinal anesthesia is useful for those surgeries where there is limited duration and redosing of the injection or the redosing cannot be done and postdural puncture headache is a very common problem. Now let me compare this spinal anesthesia now with the epidural anesthesia. Right? Now let me compare this with the epidural anesthesia. See the problem with the epidural anesthesia, it is very difficult to perform. Right? Only expert persons can do this particular epidural anesthesia. Therefore, it is less reliable. Okay? So the problem is it is difficult to perform.
all right and only experts can perform this and this is less reliable right this is less reliable all right next now you see the onset of action with the spinal anesthesia with the spinal anesthesia there is very quick onset of action whereas the onset of action with the epidural anesthesia is very slower okay so onset of analgesic effect right this is slower okay the onset of analgesic effect is very slower all right but what is the advantage of this remember it can be used for surgeries of any duration right we put the epidural catheter and continuously that local anesthetic will be passing through that particular catheter this can be used for surgeries for any duration but whereas spinal anesthesia is used for those surgeries where you have limited duration okay so this can be used for surgeries of any duration right of any duration why we keep the catheter in place and continuously the drug can be administered right and continuously the drug can be administered and the what was the very common problem with the spinal anesthesia that is postdural puncture headache postdural puncture headache is very less with this particular epidural anesthesia right pdph postdural puncture headache is less right why postdural puncture headache is less because it is quite superficial procedure right it is quite superficial procedure and there is no csf leak also that is the reason why the postdural puncture headache is less all right so these are the differences between the spinal anesthesia and as well as the epidural anesthesia so this concludes the uses of local anesthetics and this concludes the entire local anesthesia